module one let me um, have a short announcement first for those who are asking where to find the module for those who are asking that they are have not yet no uh, visited the office to get the hard copy do not worry because in our google classroom um, you will find it there in this in the classwork in particular uh, specifically kaninga area entire module for the prelim period you will get the soft copy or digital copy for the entire module for layer one in the prelim period so all you have to do is to download this pdf and if you do have time already to visit the office kindly um go to the office at your convenience and get your hard copy or you may also print this in your area okay so now let us proceed okay uh, a minute all right Okay, so you were already asked to watch this uh, pre-recorded video of ours. So this is an additional information of our discussion for today, particularly on the subtopic which focuses on the various police, uh, the various principles of organization or police organization. So in our copy, in your copy, uh, you will find it there that there are, what's this? There are different, no? There are different principles of police organization. In fact, we do have the unity of command, the span of control, the delegation of authority, the hierarchy of authority, the specialization, and of course, you do have your chain of command and your command responsibility. So let us focus first. Why is it rather that the principles of organization is very important? Okay. So, our principles of organization is very important. It is indispensable. No, imperative. Kinahang lang na ah. Nga naman. No, it ensures harmony oh, within the organization. It ensures that the subordinates, that the people is guided towards the objective or goals of the organization. It ensures that these or uh, objectives or this um goals are achieved itself okay so una is what we call unity of command so it dictates that there should be only one man commanding the unit to ensure uniformity in the execution of orders that is the primary reason why That is their primary reason why if you will look at the structure of the PNP organization, you will find it there na ang atuang chief PNP is Usara Kabuok. Okay? If you will also look at the JMP, ang pinakataas is also Usa. If you will also look at uh, your BFP, it's the same. Usara Gyapon ang head. Usara Gyapon, ang pinakataas na position. Usa ka high primary reason, why kinahang lang Usara Gyod? To ensure na dili maglibog ang subordinates. To ensure that there is uniformity in the execution, in the giving of orders. Try to imagine, if you belong to a certain organization, like for example, na belong ka ani nga police station, the ang happy sa police organization as a police station is duwa ka buok. Si happy A will give another order. Si happy B will give another order. So if you are the subordinate, of course, what will happen is that you will be confused. Which order must be followed? Is it given by happy A or is it given by the happy B? 
Okay, so if there is only one supervisor, ang mahitabo is that dili maglibog ang ang subordinates. So it ensures uniformity in the execution of orders. In that way also, na ma-avoid ang conflicting orders. It avoids the possible. It avoids the chances that the organization will die in its natural way. Okay, so muna importante ka ayu ang unity of command. It is very important that a certain department, a certain office, should only only be spearheaded, should only be headed by one manager or one supervisor. So muna na siya kasi simply ang ato ang unity of command. Another is your span of control. A span of control is a very important principle of or organization because this mainly focus on the manager on the supervisor gano man because as the leader as the head as the supervisor as the manager of that certain office or of that certain department it is very important that you know your own Okay, it's very important that you know your own strength and weaknesses. Therefore, as a leader, you need to assess your own strength. Unsay kaya nimo? Okay, maayo ba ka sa power ah making of a PowerPoint presentation? Are you good in making speeches? Okay. And aside from that, it's very important that as a leader, you need to accept your own. Weaknesses, like you cannot be on the same place at the same time. If you need to attend two events, yeah, unfortunately, will happen on the same day and time. You cannot be there, no. Dili ka pwede nga naaka sa usaka, ah, sa sa duha ka activity on the same day and on the same time. So mo na yung usas sa mga butang nga part of the weaknesses. Again, as a leader, you need to assess your own strength. You need to accept your weaknesses. So, usa giingon dere that our span of control it refers to the maximum number of subordinates that a superior can effectively supervise. So, therefore, by doing this, you when you Accept kung unsa rin kaya ni mong masupervise due to humanly no and physical limitations. That's uh it only means that you accept your own weaknesses. And if you accept your own weaknesses, diha na po musulod ang atuang delegation of authority. But before we continue to delegation of authority, let us first discuss the various factors. Which affects the span of control. Una, leadership qualities of a supervisor. So, ikaw as a leader or a supervisor, it's very important that you need to accept your strength and your limitations. Okay, as a leader, you need to accept that there are certain qualities of leadership that you do not possess, and those. Qualities that you do not possess or you're somehow weak of, you need to strengthen it. Okay, so you need to undergo training. You need to undergo leadership seminars in order to not not to improve your leadership skills. Another nature of job and work condition. Yes, this is very common. Labina, if you are the head of a certain office, or you are the manager of a certain uh. Department, na ajoy instances that you will be asked to no to 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 join seminars, to join trainings, conferences for one week, two weeks, or few days. And remember, as a leader, as the head of office or department, dili pwede that you will leave nga imuhang mga tao walay nagasis. Okay, mo nang musulod ang ato ang gitawag nga delegation of authority. It is because through delegation of authority, in your absence, you delegate. Unsay delegate? You give 
the responsibility to the next senior officer or to the most senior officer of your office. All right. Another thing, thing is the complexity of the task. Okay. Like a very good example for this is like you were invited, no? You were invited to become the resource speaker for the doning of ranks sa Cosca Criminology face-to-face. -face. And then you've accepted the invitation. A uh, few days after, you've received another communication from the reg uh, PNP Regional Office, okay, that you need to attend a conference, face-to-face -face conference. So, since you've already committed to be the resource speaker, ani ang pangutan na? Uh, the question is, as the head of office, okay, as the manager supervisor, question can you be on on two places at the same time? The answer is no. The question is, which is more important? Which is, which is, kuan ka a priority as of the moment? Asa may mas given weight ni mo? Is it the, the, the extracurricular activity of yours to become their resource speaker? Or is it, no? Is, or is it the kuan, to, to, to join the conference nga needed kaayo. So, of course, as the, as the head of office of the police station, as the head here, like for example, what you're going to do is that you will need to, of course, select ka na in relation sa imuhang trabaho. It should be given weight first. And since you've already committed to be the resource speaker, what you're going to do as a good leader to ensure na, to ensure that you will still be able to deliver. So what you're going to do is do you need to delegate the responsibility. You need to remember that's, that as a leader, you need to determine also the strength and the weaknesses of your personnel. Kay in the delegation of authority, it's not just by delegating the responsibility. It's not just by giving the responsibility, but by making sure that you are delegating, giving the responsibility to the most qualified personnel of yours. Okay? So, munang as a leader, kinahanglan ka, balupo ka sa imuhang mga tao. So, if you think that police, uh, that PO3 is really good in public speaking, so you can make him as a representative demo. You can delegate him to deliver a speech sa doning of ranks in Koska, for example. Okay? So, if you will do that, therefore, you are already no exercising good leadership. Another, education and skill of your employees. Correct! As a leader, you need to know your people. As what I have mentioned earlier, you need to know their strength and their weaknesses. Kinsa may maayong musayaw. Mm, that's also very important. Kay, you know what? Our PNP does not focus alone on crime prevention and conducting patrol. Napotay gitawag o police community relation activities. Part of which is kanang Zumba. Mm, police officer may mulit sa Zumba. That is still an example and a part of police community relation activities. Okay? So you need to determine, aside from that, you need to determine also, kinsay maayo sa computer. Who's very literate to computer? Who knows how to, no, how to make PowerPoint presentation? No, how to, to use the publisher sa computer? In ana. And you need to know also, kinsa may maayong muhimo o communications. So kung kani si Kuan, PO1 is really good in communicate in making communications, mga correspondence, letters okay so you can no so you can assign her sa mga administrative job you need to determine also kinsa may police officers nako na kabalong mo drive o four wheels so if you can determine then you can assign them in uh, uh, as a kuan as a driver sa inyong patrol car so these are just some of the many uh, responsibilities of being a leader you need to know 
your men. So if there are areas nga medyo minus sila or wala dyan ka possess any nga skill or quality, then that's the time that you need to no, to look for training and ask these people or ask these men of yours or subordinate of yours to join the training to ensure that they will acquire the skill itself. Okay? Next, delegation of authority. As what I have mentioned earlier, your span of control and your delegation of authority, it's like a couple. No, it's like a couple. Na dili pwede nga naa si span of control pero wala kay delegation of authority. So, kinahang lang, you need to delegate. You need to remember the moment that you delegate the responsibility to your members, you are also giving them, them limited authority, limited right. Okay, nga limited is the word? Because ang ilaharang right and authority is... Of course, isolated ragyod kung asa ni mo sila gidelegate nga responsibility. Okay? So therefore, if you will join a training and you will be out no for one week, so you need to look for your most senior officer and you need to delegate the responsibility to him or to her as the OIC or officer in charge in your absence. Okay, so in that way, um, you, you do have this confidence that your your men are working. You do have this confidence that the objective of your organization is achieved, or the uh, the objectives or goals of your organizations are achieved. Next is the hierarchy of authority. So this refers to the relationship between the seniors and the subordinates. You need to understand that in all law enforcement organizations, whether it's a PNP, okay, whether a uh, tribunal, you need to... Hmm, Okay, you need to understand that that in the law enforcement organization, specifically in the tribunal, the jail, the fire, and the police, and other law enforcement agency, like your NBI, like your PDEA, your Coast Guard, okay, so on and so forth. These are all examples of organizations that greatly acknowledges superiority or seniority. Okay, monang in our in our koan in our college, monang you are asked to respect your seniors because if we do have face to face classes, one of the tradition manggod nga ginabuhat kung mag face to face na is that kamu nga mga first year if you see a senior or third uh, a senior whether it's a second year about or fourth year you need to do side step. Okay, kaya kanang sidestep, it is an acknowledgement, no, that you respect their seniority. They get my point. And aside from that, aside from sidestep, whenever you need to talk to them, talk to them, brother, talk to them, kinahang lang you need to address them as ma'am and sir. Okay, anong kinabuhat na nato? Kayo, we are, ano, we are already conditioning your mind, okay, in, in the four corners of the our academics nga it's very important yun, that you need to observe seniority just like in the PNP and in the tribura and other law enforcement organization ila jong ginafollow pag maayo ang ato ang seniority even in fact um kanang joining of trainings okay ang seniority is gonna observe pud siya a very good example for this is what we call Junior. Okay. A very good example for this is the junior leadership training course in the PNP organization. What's the junior leadership training course, ma'am? It is a mandatory training. Again, it is a mandatory training. Okay. Ma'am, kisara may pwedeng 
mu undergo o junior leadership training course. Ang pwede rang mu undergo o this kind of training, mandatory training, are those police officers with a rank of PO3 or um unsay tawag ani or uh police officer 3. Then sa ha. Okay. okay. I'll go back. Mm. I will look for a better image. Wait, sa. Mm hmm. Nani to. I hope it is clear on your end. Because remember, in the PNP organization, Manggood, giusub na nila ilang rank classification. Sa una, if we will see a, a, a rookie, we call them PO1. Pero dili na na siya PO1 karon. Okay? Ang tawag, saon man na ni pagpadako? Wait for a minute. I will try to. Okay. Okay, so na natay ang crank classification sa PNP bago na. Okay. Sa una, if... Dili. Okay, dili pwede. Sorry, di siya pwede. Okay, kindly stretch your phone. So sa una, ang tawag, uh, kung sa una ang tawag is PO1, ang bagong tawag ana is patrolman if it is a male. Kung babae, patrol woman. If PO2, police corporal. If it is PO3, police staff sergeant. If it is SPO1, police master sergeant. If it is SPO2, it's police senior master sergeant. If it is PO, SPO3 or senior police officer 3, ang tawag niya is police chief master sergeant. If it is SPO4, Senior Police Officer, ang bagong tawag is Police Executive Master Surgeon. If it is Inspector, ang bagong tawag is Police Lieutenant. So, sa karaan, Senior Inspector, ang bagong alan, Police Captain. Chief Inspector, new name, new rank, poli, uh, Police Major. Superintendent, new rank, Police Lieutenant Colonel. Senior Superintendent, Police Colonel. Chief Superintendent, new rank classification, Police Brigadier General, Director, Police Major General, Deputy Director General, Police Lieutenant General, and ang pinakahayas, ang old ang tawag niya is Director General, but in the new rank classification, ang tawag sa Chief PNP is Police General. Okay? Police General. So, going back to the training that I have mentioned earlier, so, if your rank is PO3 and sa bago police staff surgeon, kamuray mo qualify for the training itself. So, as you can see, karon giayo to observe ang seniority, the hierarchy of seniority based on the rank itself. And you need to remember, your junior leadership course is called as a mandatory course. It is because dili ka pwedeng ma-promote from PO3 or S or Police Staff Sergeant papunta sa SPO1 or Police Master Sergeant without taking this junior leadership course. Mo na siya rason nga nung gitawag siyang mandatory. And you can use, after taking the training, pwede na ni mo siyang magamit o doha ka promotion. So, pwede ni mo siyang magamit in applying for promotion for police staff, uh, police master sergeant, and you can still use it for a promotion po di mo sa SPO2 or police senior master sergeant. Pag-abot ni mo SPO3 or Police Chief Master Sergeant, that is another mandatory training. Okay? 
So, in the PNP, dagkan kayong mandatory training. All right. Okay. In terms with the promotion also, in terms with the promotion also, it is uh, very important. Again, in terms with the promotion also, it's very important. Uh, seniority or hierarchy of authority is also observed. Like for example, sa Osaka sa usaka year na ay duha ka batches of trainee so but pa sa but sa panahon pod nga na ay promotion katong una nga batch sa police officer maoy i prioritize for the train uh, for the promotion okay yeah just for in case that uh, police officer who belongs to the first batch dili siya ma promote so i prioritize pod siya sa sunod promotion. So most likely kung wala ra siya problema, ma-promote siya from PO1 to PO2 or shall I say from patrolman or woman to police corporal. So again, please do make sure to memorize the new rank classification. Okay, while listening, can you make sure to take down notes because you will have a quiz after this. Thank you very much. Another is your um, specialization. So, the assignment of a particular personnel to a particular task. So, ang specialization job refers to an area of specialization. So, the designation of certain activities or tasks as ones that must be performed highly, technological, scientific, or precise manner. So, areas of police uh, specialization, this also includes kind of undercover works, crime scene, legal advising, computer, SWAT operations. So, therefore, ang imuhang area of specialization, okay, this focuses more on a specialized training skills or uh, educational qualification. Example, in order for you to be assigned in the Forensic 7, again, Forensic, sa una, ang tawag ana is PNP Crime Lab. Okay? Ang tawag ana actually sa una is PNP Crime Lab. But unfortunately, karun, they've already changed the name. So it's no longer PNP Crime Lab. It's already called as Forensic 7. The word 7 there represents kung asa siya nga region. So, if it says PNP Forensic uh, forensic, sev, uh, forensic uh, 7, it means nga this uh, specific crime lab or forensic unit belongs to region 7. Same as if it is 6, it means that it belongs to region uh, 6. If it is... Uh, 5, it means it belongs to Region 5, so on and so forth. Ganong gihatag na kung example ang ato ang crime lab? Because you need to remember that our uh, forensic science is composed of various branches. So these are just some, okay? So sa ato ang Forensic 7, it is already emergence of units or divisions, dependis gidak on sa crime lab, okay, of various forensic branches. Okay. So, unsa mani sila ilahang, unsa may trabaho sa ato ang forensic, uh, ato ang forensic unit. Ilahang trabaho is to, no, to conduct laboratory examinations, to make communications of the results, to, to make a complete report and after which they if the case itself prospers to court they are asked to testify and ang tawag nila is expert witness again ang tawag sa ilaha is expert witness remember matawag ra na nga expert witness again Remember, matawag ra na 
ang usa ka witness as an expert witness if the person who is testifying possesses a special knowledge or proficiency on the issue itself like for example uh for example question document examination ikaw maoy question document examiner ikaw maoy nagkandak examination sa kuan sa ibutang nato sa check okay check ba check oh so if 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 you are asked to testify about your examination the result of your examination then ang tawag nimo is expert witness and the testimony that you are giving is what we call expert testimony the beauty of an expert witness is that they can give no conclusions okay they can even give opinions based on the examination based on the result of the examination you need to take in mind that there are two types of witnesses Okay, you need to bear in mind na naatay duha ka klase nga witnesses. Naatay gitawag nga ordinary witness. Ordinary. Naatay gitawag nga ordinary witness. So, unsa man ang ordinary witness? These are witnesses who can only testify on facts and gives evidence on facts which are under inquiry. Unsay but pasabot. Ani, nga kung unsay pangutan na, maura po'y ilang pwedeng itubag. They cannot even give their opinion because their answer should only be based on what is perceived by their senses. So, say perceived. Unsay nakita, unsay nadungog, unsay nahikapan. O, kung trip ninyo, pwede po unsay natilawan. Mau na siya'y ordinary witness. Okay? So, ordinary witness also means that you do not possess a special knowledge or proficiency on the issue that you are testifying. Okay? Again, a little summary. Naatay duha ka klase ng witnesses. Naatay ordinary and we do have the so-called expert. Okay? So, unsay kalainan again between the two, your ordinary witness can only testify sa mga butang na iyahang nakita, nadunggan, natilawan. Ang pwede ra po niyang mahatag is based sa pangutana. He or she cannot give an opinion or conclusion. Okay? While your expert witness can testify also kung unsay na perceive, nakita, nadunggan. Nakita niya sa iyang examination. And aside from that, he or she can even give an opinion out from the examination conducted. So that's the difference between the two. Okay? So going back the ring. Alright. So what are the different um, branches? Example, branches of a forensic science first is we do have a question document examination your question document examination okay your question document examination is a type of forensic science that deals with a scientific examination of mga question documents. So, what are the common examples of question documents? Okay. The common examples of question documents are the following. Kanang check. Check eh. Mm, may go mo ma'am. Ano ang check eh? Mahimo siyang question document. It becomes a question document if there is an alteration made over the document. May napod mo ma'am. Unsa nang alteration? Ah. 
alteration simply means that there are changes that has been made after the document has been prepared. So therefore, changes were made over the document already after siyang na-finalize. Okay mo, nabot pa sabot sa alteration. O, again, I will repeat. Alteration simply explains nga ang imuhang giusob sa document na hitabo na after the document was finalized. Example, let's go back to check. You were given uh, 1,000, a check issued to you, an amount of 1,000. And what niya na napoy perma sa tag iya, and what you did, Imong gibuta ang imong gibuhat imuhang gidungagan og zero og kama to make it appear nga 10,000 instead of 1,000. So that is an example of an altered check. Okay, ano altered because imo siyang gidungagan og zero after na siyang ma-finish og fill up sa tag iya sa check or owner of the bank account nga nag-issue. Okay, so ang may tabuan na it will be subjected to a document examination. Okay, so another is, kanang mga licenses and certificates, pwede kayo nang buhat dun. Like, like, if you go to Manila, o, oh, balag, kung ganahan kang magpahimo o TUR nga, ikaw PhD grad, o, oh, ala, pwede kayo. So, muna siya rason, ano, some of, some of kung documents like the TOR, certificates, licenses, even kanin yung mga diploma, gina-verify na siya pag maayo to ensure that it is authentic. Another is your passport. O, oh, kumun kayo ni siya. No? Ibutang sa passport lifting, ang tawag, ana, nga, ang, ang passport, pulihan, o imuwang nawung. So, muna very particular kayo na silang mo examine sa imuang passport to really no to really make sure nga ang kaning nakabutang dari ikaw gyud na another is your money okay your bank note okay your bank note so muna naabot dari unsa gyud ang bank note class your bank note refers to your our paper bill money ano gitawag siyang bank note asa man Asa gagi ka ng word nga bank, ma'am? It is because our note, kaning paper bill na to, na ano siya embedded security features made by the Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas. Take note, guys. Uh, the only bank who is allowed to produce our bank note, it is only Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas. Okay? Under strong supervision ang production ay na. So, muna gitawag siya banknote because it possess the security features embedded by the Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas of course, with the approval of our president. Okay. Nga nung matawag man siya nga? Counterfeit note. Dili fake money ha? Ang fake money is just a layman's term. Ang, if you are a criminology student, and a question document examiner, the correct technical term for mga fake money is counterfeit note. Counterfeit note. So, mo na rason, nga nung question document examination, kanang mga counterfeit note is also part of the examination to determine if a money is genuine or counterfeit. Another thing, mga resibo, kanang mga lottery, oh, kung mahilig mong tayo gluto, Swertres. Okay? Or, of course, kani po mga suicide notes. Okay? To ensure nga kanang pagkamatay niya is it is not a stage crime. Kaya may uban mang good nga gimurder sila. Yung pagkahuman, ibitay sila sa, sa punuan to make it appear as if they committed a suicide. Kaya yung pagkahuman maghimo o suicide note. Ang tawag na to, Ana, is stage crime. So, monang, when kanang atong taga Soko, investigator, responds to a crime scene involving suicide, di lang sila automatic mayroon, ay, nagpakamatay ni no. They will assess the situation. Kaya na ay possibility that there is a foul play. That it is a stage crime. 
Okay? So, aside from your question document, we do have also cyber forensics. So, ang cyber forensics na to, it focuses on no tracing the URL. Pariyo an ng kinsa ng nag nag create a website for no for child pornography. Usanas ilang ginalanto. Even if they will erase their site, they will erase their video. It can still be retrieved. So, mo nang naatay, gitawag nga for cyber forensic. Pero yung po na nang kuan, naakay, naakay sex video, sex scandal. Yagi upload. Matris pag maayo kung kiasa nang ga-upload. O kinsa nang nagpasa. Ana. Okay, so matris na siya. Mo nang kamo, you need to be careful. Kaya pwede mong makasuhan. Anang mag-upload mo o sex scandal without na consent of the owner. But there are those nga gigamit na nilang panghulga to blackmail in order to earn money or to have sex again. So, munang females and males, you need to very, to, you need to be very careful. And you need to remember that premarital sex or fornication is a sin. Okay? You need to remember that it should be Uh, this kind of, of of things should only be done by married couples. But if it happens, palayo simbako, you need to make sure na wala mo nag video video. Kaya kung mag video video mo, diha na mo sulod ang problema. Okay? Another thing is your fingerprint. Okay. So your fingerprint itself. Okay. So, your fingerprint itself is muna ito ang gigamit nga best means of establishing your personal identity. Nga ikaw, si Pedro Jogka with the use of your fingerprint. But you need to remember that in establishing our personal identity, dili na pinaagi sa fingerprint. But also, we can use our DNA. And you need to remember that there are different sources. Okay? There are different sources of DNA. So, what are the different sources of DNA? You can use your blood, you can use your semen, you can use your saliva, and even urine. Asa pa mo tae? Your hair, your teeth, your tissue. Okay? These are just some of the many uh, sources or samples na pwedeng gamiton to establish your DNA. Alright? So, another thing is this one. Forensic tool marks. You do have your also your... When mo ma, mo sa na forensic tool marks? Okay. Okay, so your forensic tool marks is a type of uh, division which focuses more on the examination of the tool marks. Say tool marks ka nang gigamit sa pagkumit o crime, the gunshot residue, the serial number restoration, mag macro itching. So naan na dia sa tool marks. Okay. So, aside from that is we do have also toxicology. So, it focuses on the study of blood. Uh, the study of, sorry, poison to determine whether ikaw ba, ang rason bang namatay ka, it's because gibutangan o poison ang imong drinks or not. Another is serology. It focuses on your blood. Remember nga naatay different. Um, we do have four blood types. Okay. What are the different blood type na to, guys? We do have A, we do have B, we do have O, and we do have AB. Kaning naka-plus o negative, ang tawag ana is RH. Daily red horse, ha? Ang tawag ana is RH. So, it is represented by a positive and a negative. So, aside from knowing your class Blood type, you need to you know also your RH, whether it's positive or negative. Okay? So, ang pinaka-universal blood, it is 
type O. Okay. So let's continue. Another is your forensic chemistry. Your forensic chemistry, it is composed of different branches like the QD, like the fingerprint, toxicology, uh, tool marks. These are all under actually forensic chemistry. You, and aside sa imong serology, dili na siya focus sa blood. It also focuses on the semen itself. Okay, kaya nga naman, ang semen nato, this is very common on on crimes involving rape. Alangan, rape, Jod. Okay? Ingon, Ana. So, in our study niya po on forensic chemistry, we will discuss further on say different compositions of, different compositions of your semen. Okay? So, aside from that, we do have also anthropology and we do have forensic audio and video. Masabot, pasabot, ani. Kani imo ang forensic uh, audio or gitawag na siya voice analysis. Masabot, pasabot, nga kita ko nung tawo, ang ato ang tingog is unique to us and this will serve us kanabang establishing also our identity. But we cannot omit the chances also na naay uban who are gifted enough na they can mimic one, two, four, or ten voices. Okay? Another is forensic ballistics. Okay? So, ang inuang forensic ballistics, it focuses more on the examination of our firearm to determine whether or not such firearm was produced, fired on this firearm. If kana ba siyang, sorry, if that ammunition was fired using caliber 38, okay, uh, 45, M16, so on and so forth. So, na po tayong na legal medicine. We've already discussed this. Your legal medicine focuses on the uh, particularly katong autopsy, it focuses on the study of the cause of death. Alright? So, your autopsy normally involves the dissection itself. Okay? So, muna siya, mapunta ka sa crime lab if you possess trainings, knowledge, and license involving different areas of forensic sciences. Pero, dili na siya sa crime lab. As what I've mentioned, if ikaw pud lawyer, ibuta po ka sa legal division. If ikaw pud na sulod sa PNP using the SWAT or the SAF quota, ibutang po ka sa SAF or SWAT quota. So remember, ang SAF o SWAT, these are our elite unit in the PNP organization. Okay? Or another thing, um, ikaw, kuan ka, um, uh, unsay tawag ani, you're good in IT. Hmm. So, pwede po ka mabutang sa IT department. So, ano. Okay? Another is specialization of people. So, kung ikaw na belong ka sa mga specialized area, ang tawag ni mo is a specialist. As what I have mentioned earlier, ang number one nga trabaho sa ito ang mga specialist sa atong expert is to support no is to help a bet no by conducting examination and providing information to our investigators or to our people who police officers who belongs in the primary line function just like in the conduct of crime scene investigation another Chain of command. Okay, your chain of command simply explains the arrangement of officers from top to bottom on the basis of rank, authority, and even your position. Um, in terms with the chain of command, it is not on. Uh, it is also observed labina if na ay communications. Okay, so unsay bot pasabot. Nga ang communications, mga memos, mga correspondence, mga letters, ihatag dyo na sa head. Okay? Ang head, ang trabaho niya is to receive, approve, and disseminate the information to its people. Observing chain of command um, allows or ensures that people 
subordinates, okay, or officers from top to bottom are informed. All right. Next is command responsibility. So it dictate it dictates that as a superior, as the supervisor, you are responsible sa behaviors ay mo ang tao. That sa panahon nga na ay mga untoward incidents, automatic you are held liable. But then again, you need to remember according to uh, our video nga your command responsibility has certain exemptions. Okay. So, unsa ito yung mga, naadari ang mga exemptions na to. Nga as a superior or supervisor, it's very important that if there are untoward incidents, you need to conduct an immediate investigation. So, the commanding officer, okay, these are the exemptions. Una, when the commanding officer was not properly informed of the act or omission of his subordinates, wa siya ma-inform. Mm, that will serve as a an exemption for the command responsibility. Another thing is, tungod kay wala ka na-inform or na-inform ka later, you have conducted an immediate investigation. So, if you've conducted immediate investigation towards no, the 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 irregularities of your people then you will be exempted from the doctrine of command responsibility or probably na inform ka sa misbehavior na inform ka sa incident pero kana siya is that you acted based on the lawful orders from the superior then you are exempted from the doctrine of command responsibility okay Alright, so again, kindly for those who were not able to watch this part, kindly make sure to watch this. And that's it. We're already done sa ato ang, we're already done sa ato ang module 1. So this one, I'll be posting this in our Google Classroom. Kindly make sure to take the quiz. And after ninyong watch aning pre-recorded video, kindly make sure to... Um, open Google Classroom because um, you will have a short quiz based on the discussions that I have made in Module 1, particularly sa ato ang uh, police, uh, principles of police organizations. Don't forget, include the additional informations that I have provided. And additional information, kindly study in advance Module 2. God bless guys and amping mo permit.